trafficking occurred in all 50 states. There are more people in bondage now than at any other point in human history. The average age of a trafficking victim is 14 to 16 years old, and only 1 to 2% of victims are ever rescued. Can you tell me about human trafficking in West Texas? I think one of the the most telling things about human trafficking in West Texas is the fact that not too many people know about it. Mm -hmm. I know when I got here two years ago, I myself didn't know too much about it other than um, what I had seen on TV just in terms of international trafficking and that kind of thing. Yeah, I guess just the biggest thing about human, human trafficking in West Texas is that um, it's grown. You know, mm -hmm. when I did one of my stories for the newspaper in April, there had only been 53 mm -hmm. victims identified and just now I did another story recently here in um, October and it's already grown to 109 and I don't think necessarily that it's been the number of victims that's grown more so as it has been people coming forward and victims yeah. coming forward and identifying themselves and mm -hmm. seeking that help. This is such a new field. A lot of people don't even think that it exists in a small town like Lubbock or even in a, a place that's supposed to be as widespread as West Texas. So I understand the frustration that it's going to take a while to get things right. Nothing is ever completely right the first time around. It's incredibly complicated why people choose to stay or go or how people even end up in that situation. A lot of it really has to do with psychological trauma and brainwashing. That's really the biggest thing, I believe. A lot of the pimps and traffickers, they use very specific techniques in order to brainwash their girls, in order to get them feeling that they're completely dependent on them and isolating them. And so all of a sudden you go from having this worldview this big and then your worldview becomes this small. And so you really move from a state in living to a state of surviving. And a lot of the traffickers are incredibly smart. And so they'll find people who are already kind of in survival mode or maybe have a different kind of vulnerability and they'll exploit that and twist that to where they're able to use them in the ways that they want to. Whether that's selling them actually out on the street, arranging dates in hotels, using them for pornography, selling them to their friends. Some traffickers even might just keep somebody in their own home and just not allow them to leave. So it looks a lot of different ways, but really just pulling people away from any and every support system. My name is Catherine and I'm a survivor of human trafficking. Yeah, so really nice neighborhood, grew up in um, what it would look like to be pretty wealthy, um, middle class-ish, and so um, around the age of uh, six, my brother started molesting me every every day and abusing me until I was about 10. Um, but I didn't find out until later that um, everything that was going on was filmed and like pictures were taken and everything and sold online to a distributor. And um, so yeah, so he was thrown in jail just because of child pornography. And um, so he is still in jail. Um, but. Through that, uh, like I said, I didn't find out until actually a few years ago that it was all distributed online. Whenever my brother was, um, whenever he was found out, the way they found out was the guy that was distributing everything was um, not in love or not in wherever we were living. He was far further away, and they found out and uh, through him because he had been distributing things. And whenever they went to go find him and arrest him, he actually hung himself. Talking a little bit more specifically about human sex trafficking mm -hmm. and prostitution, how easy is it to get a prostitute? Very easy. Um, I've been giving a presentation lately, um, specifically talking about um, Backpage.com, and you can have a prostitute nightly. I mean, they they're they're selling them in Lubbock nightly, daily. So it, it is very very easy. Sadly. And are they just hiring prostitutes in Lubbock or also the surrounding area? Also the surrounding area. Uh, with, a, with a page like Black, with Backpage, uh, you can be in Sundown, Texas. You can be in Level Land, Texas. And you can just do a little search and you can have a prostitute at your door. It's crazy. 
these women that are on here are required to be with at least five guys every night. A lot of these women, if they're not with five guys, they get beat up. At least five guys. They don't make a thousand, fifteen hundred dollars a night, whatever their quota is. They either get beat, they have to go without food. Um, the way I tell my guys is imagine, especially the older guys that go up to them and say, all right, imagine just being with your with your partner, your wife. Um, if when you're with your wife, that is amazing. You have a great time. But imagine having to do that 10 to 15 times a night. They're like, whoa, <laughs> you know, it's pretty intense. Mm -hmm. Imagine being having, imagine being forced to do that 10 or 15 times a yeah. night. Thank you. All right, there it is right there. So what's the one that? There you go, you can register your slave here. Granted, this, these websites were started as a fetish, but they can easily, they have easily become manipulated into a branding girls and having them. sex trafficking as someone who is under 18. But if a woman who is now over 18 was trafficked as a minor, she must prove force, fraud, or coercion to be seen as a victim. I think it's really, really important that the community is educated on the fact that um, these women that are in prostitution or are stripping or um, are being abused as children and taken advantage of their victims um, and that girl that you see in a porn, porn porno or or in a picture like she's a victim too in the state of Texas right now we have two shelters for minor sex trafficking victims one of them is outside of Houston they can take 20 victims right now and the other one is in Tyler and they can take six um, these homes this is great, but if you look at the statistics nationwide, and of course Texas is a very large state, and because of our interstates, these girls are being trafficked in Texas, at least transported through Texas, and we just do not have enough beds here. One of our main obstacles is that lots of um, government money isn't used for the bricks and mortar, that it will pay for the operations budget to take care of the girls, but we've got to raise um, the money to pay for the home itself. And so that's really where we are right now in the process is we need the support of this community. It's nothing we can show yet. We can show the numbers and those numbers represent young girls from our community. But we need help actually building the facility so then we can move on with our program. Honestly, the reason I started the South Plains Men Challenging Men is because of the fact of the matter is when 98% of the perpetrators of violence against women are men, it's a man's issue. It always has been a men's issue.